Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, a New Year's celebration put on by the New York Chinese consulate. And New York politicians were on the guest list. A closer look at who got the invite. China releasing new images of its homemade aircraft carrier 10 days before Taiwanese voters will choose their new president. How does it compare to American vessels? That's a significant demonstration of technological uh, uh, capability. It's also a demonstration of their espionage. A shakeup in China's gaming industry, Beijing has reportedly removed an official over an incident tied to the video game sector. What's behind the purge? And a new electric vehicle giant emerges challenging Tesla's dominance. Discover the world's new largest EV company in the latest quarter. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. A New Year's celebration is making headlines. It involves two New York State lawmakers, a key aide to New York City's mayor, and the Chinese consulate in New York. The story was first covered by Fox News. The consulate hosted a New Year gathering Sunday. The guest list included a number of New York politicians. State Senator Leroy Comrie, State Assemblyman David Weeprin, Winnie Greco, Senior Advisor to New York City Mayor Eric Adams, New York City Council Member Christopher Mart, and Peter Zhang, the President of Sino-American Friendship Association. That organization has faced accusations of being involved in Beijing's United Front Network. And the United Front is a big deal. Critics say the agency works to influence other countries' policies toward China and targets prominent individuals, universities and think tanks. What this is, is the Chinese Communist Party's effort to manage those outside of the party. And so they are targeting non-Chinese, they're targeting religious minorities, and even traditionally they're going after um, business associations and trade unions and all types of clubs. They want to get uh, control of these different organizations so that they can establish a united front and push the CCP's policy objectives. Back to the Sino-American Friendship Association, a report from Washington Post found that the group's honorary president also holds another important title. He's a member of China's People's Political Consultative Conference, or CPPCC. This political body is a central part of Beijing's United Front system. The organization also arranged trips to meet with United Front work officials in China. NTD reached out to Sino-American Friendship Association for comment, but did not hear back before airtime. Ten days ahead of Taiwan's presidential election, China released new images of its latest aircraft carrier. Called Fujian, it's China's first homegrown aircraft carrier. Fujian is equipped with more advanced tracks for launching aircraft. It allows the carrier to launch fighter jets with more fuel and weapons. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has ordered the military to improve combat readiness by 2027. This aircraft carrier is not commissioned yet. Right now, the U.S. has the highest number of aircraft carriers in service, 11. China has two. Next, a closer look at those vessels as we set sail into the future with China's next generation aircraft carrier. It's a looming force in Beijing's pursuit to reunify Taiwan, something communist leader Xi Jinping just declared inevitable. How would the naval giant measure up against U.S. carriers in a potential showdown over the self-ruled island? We had the opportunity to sit down with Captain James Fennell, former director of intelligence at U.S. Pacific Fleet, for insight. Captain James Fennell, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thanks, Tiffany. Uh, great to be back and Happy New Year. China has recently unveiled new images of its next generation aircraft carrier. This is supposed to be better than the Shandong and the Liaoning. How does that compare to the U.S. carriers? Is this a threat? Well, it's not a threat to our current carrier force in the sense that it, it doesn't have nuclear propulsion. It's a conventionally powered aircraft carrier. Uh, but it is a significant step forward. This carrier now has been imaged several times, and it's now clear from imaging that came out in the last 24 hours that they have three electromagnetic aircraft launch system catapults. So they skipped 
the entire generation of steam launch catapults that the Americans that I served on for, you know, my, in my career, steam catapults that was the backbone of the U.S. carrier fleet. They've skipped that and gone right to electromagnetic. So that's a significant demonstration of technological uh, uh, capability. It's also a demonstration of their espionage and how they were able to acquire that technology so quickly. Uh, and then they're, you know, they're in the process of conducting mooring trials. And it, it apparently, this may be news for everybody here. Uh, one of my colleagues on my list said that he just confirmed that it left the the the, the Fujian left port on the 28th of December, and is probably underway for its first sea trial. They're just building not just numbers of ships. But the tonnage has outstripped the United States over the last decade, and their ships have very high-quality anti-ship cruise missiles with uh, you know two to three hundred kilometer ranges that go supersonic. And we're still struggling to come up with our own uh, anti-ship cruise missile systems and family of systems on the U.S. side. So they have a, a capability that's very very serious. They have the geography that's in their favor when it comes to Taiwan. And uh, this is a really dangerous time. The Chinese Navy has surpassed the U.S. in terms of number of ships. Now, there is an argument that there is a quality to just quantity on its own. And this year is also the 75th year of the Chinese Communist Party taking over the mainland. We heard a bit of that in Xi Jinping's speech on Sunday when he said that the reunification with Taiwan would be inevitable. Given all this messaging coming out of China, what should the U.S. be doing now? We need to be preparing ourselves for a conflict. And I think because it takes so long to build the Navy that is needed and the air forces that are needed, we're going to have to do something in conjunction with Taiwan to throw a strategic uh, wrench into China's plans. And at this point in time, I think the only thing that's really going to cause Beijing and Xi to step back and reconsider is the implementation or, or introduction of nuclear weapons, tactical nuclear weapons uh, into Taiwan, into the theater there. And uh, this is very controversial, I know, uh, but we're at the point now where Xi has all the tools at his hand and his disposal. Uh, Xi is ready, as he said three times in the last month, in November and just twice, once in December, and here in the New Year's message, the the reunification, which is a falsity. There is no reunification since they were never part of China. But anyway, the unification of Taiwan is inevitable, and it will not be stopped, and that they're on a timeline. And we need to recognize that, and America's leaders need to recognize this now so that we're not in the same situation as we see in the Ukraine or in uh, Gaza. And on the point of the nuclear weapons, really quickly, you mentioned it is a controversial stance. Just expand on that for us. The purpose of that isn't to actually escalate war. It's a deterrence. Is that right? That's 100 percent correct. It's not, we're not asking to use nuclear weapons in any way, shape or form. What we're trying to tell Beijing is, is if you use nuclear or if you use conventional weapons to invade Taiwan, you have to risk and consider that nuclear weapons could be then used in a tactical fashion uh, against you, uh, Beijing. Captain James Fennell, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next, a roundup of short economic updates from China. First, a dismal end to 2023. Long-time foreign funds reportedly pulled back from Chinese equities at breakneck speed in December. That's according to research done by U.S. investment bank Morgan Stanley. The company said that monthly capital outflow from China marked the third largest in history. Over the last year, China's stock market performance was listed as one of the worst among major world indexes. Driving to the plunge, geopolitical risks, a slow economic recovery, and policy uncertainties. Heading into 2024, China's economy hasn't really taken off. That's despite Beijing's attempts to boost its performance through a string of stimulus measures. And speaking of the stock market, on the first trading day of the new year, Chinese stocks open up with a 1.3 percent slump, forecasting a concerning prospect for the world's second largest economy. The downturn has become a trend since early 2021. But for some investors, it's an opportunity to scoop up some cheap deals. Bloomberg surveyed more than 400 investors, and nearly one-third of them said they would put more money into Chinese stocks this year.
And switching gears to the gaming sector, Beijing has reportedly fired an official in charge of overseeing the country's publicity department. This comes after a controversial gaming regulation last month set the whole industry into a tailspin. The proposed rules were designed to cut spending and playtime on video games. But they ended up triggering an $80 billion sell-off within 24 hours. Officials backpedaled from the policy just days after the announcement, saying they would adjust the measures by listening to public feedback. Throughout the last year, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has been trying to lure foreign investments to China with high-flown promises. But skepticism is growing as investors saw mixed messages from Beijing, especially as Xi seeks to strengthen his power inside and outside of China while ramping up probes on foreign consultancy firms. Chinese trade has new competition, and it's coming from South Korea. For the first time in 20 years, Seoul's exports to Washington overshadowed Beijing's last month, with South Korea clocking $11.3 billion in goods, next to China's $10.9 billion. The change comes as China's economy struggles and the West looks to find alternatives to Beijing supply chains, as well as to cut off the communist country from high-end technology that could further its military development and aggression. South Korea is looking to improve U.S. ties under new President Yoon suk yeol The country's overall exports are also up 5 percent from one year ago. Tesla has been outsold by Chinese automaker BYD. The Tesla rival now holds the title of world's largest electric vehicle maker as of the latest quarter. NTD's Dave Martin has more. China's top electric car maker BYD has outsold Tesla, making it the biggest EV company in the final quarter of 2023. It sold around 525,000 cars, while Tesla sold around 485,000, both record quarters for the companies. At the rate that BYD is growing with this huge influx of cash and the huge sales and the growth of the brand line and the product itself, because they do come from building batteries, you will soon see that they are going to start taking over Tesla. Car expert Lauren Fix says BYD performed better for many reasons. Warren Buffett is an investor, giving them an influx of cash. China dominates the global electric vehicle battery market. In fact, BYD started off as a battery company. This lets them make their own batteries at low cost and sell for low prices. The China Communist Party directly supports BYD, partially by giving it tax breaks and incentives. BYD does not sell in the U.S. Fix says if it does, this will totally destroy the U.S. marketplace when it comes to electric vehicles. Consumers aren't going to believe the low prices. I'm not seeing the quality is there. I'm not seeing the warranty is there. But if you need transportation and you have to purchase an electric vehicle for your state regulations or for your personal choice, you're going to find these vehicles coming in at a very low price. Tesla still sold more electric cars over the entirety of 2023, but its lead over BYD is shrinking significantly. In 2022, Tesla sold 400,000 more cars. Last year, in 2023, it sold only 230,000 more. This is Dave Martin for NTD News. China is welcoming in U.S. citizens with open arms by easing visa requirements for American travelers. Starting this week, U.S. tourists will no longer need to submit many documents previously required for a visa, including proof of hotel reservations or itineraries. Beijing also announced in November that citizens of multiple European countries would no longer need visas for short stays in China. China's tourism sector is struggling to recover after three years of strict pandemic measures. In 2019, nearly one billion foreigners entered and exited the country. That's compared to just 8.4 million visits in the first half of 2023. It's a mere fraction of pre-pandemic numbers. Over the summer, the United States issued a warning against traveling to China, citing the risk of wrongful detentions and exit bans. The advisory came as tensions between Beijing and Washington grew, and after citizens of multiple Western countries have been detained in China in recent years. 
Next, we'd like to take a moment to share some of your thoughts on our last show. Commenting on our report about China's major economic challenges, D. Baumberger wrote, Need to remember it's not a market economy. Communism has different rules. Several viewers also told us they noticed ads on our YouTube channel yesterday, suggesting our channel could be remonetized if it continues. It is good news since we've been demonetized for about three years. Last year, we were briefly remonetized and saw some instances where YouTube placed ads on our videos, but we didn't benefit from them. We'll keep you updated on how that progresses. Your support helps make our show possible, so please consider sharing our content with your friends and family. And don't forget to tell us what you think of today's show. Thanks for watching. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than two years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus. Or subscribe to our partner platform, Epic TV, where you can watch our full episodes. Here's what to look out for in our second half. A maritime spectacle unfolding in the South China Sea. The Philippine and U.S. military set sail for their second drill in just a few months. The 2024 Taiwan election is just 10 days away. How is the highly anticipated vote tied to U.S. geopolitics? And a less than $400 offer made to entice a former Hong Kong pro-democracy leader to become an informant. The leader now sharing the details in the UK after his release from jail in June. We're on that after the break here on China in Focus. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.